Good morning, friends, and welcome again to our worship. May you, as you come and worship with us this morning, may we be enjoined in fellowship with each other as we worship the Lord Jesus Christ, as we seek to honour him. As we come, we want to begin by worshipping Christ. We want to lift up his name and we want to proclaim his victory. So as we worship in this short time of music, may we still our hearts and may we prepare ourselves to meet with the risen Christ through faith. And may we seek to have him take up his place in our lives. Father in heaven, we do thank you that we can come. We can come in, out from the world, and we can be shut in with you. Father, we come this morning, we come expectantly this morning. We're excited this morning, Father, because we know that as we come into this place, that you are already working in us. It is your desire, Lord, to meet with us. So, Father, even though we can't yet be together, we know that we are very much one in Christ. So, Lord, speak to us through this service. Speak to us through the words that we read in Scripture. Speak to us as, indeed, we hear the message But Father, in everything this morning, be glorified, be exalted, because it is our desire in this church to praise you and to stand on the inspired, unchanging, everlasting word of God. May it speak to our hearts this morning. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The parable of the shepherd. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. 
When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will never follow a stranger, but will run away from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus told this parable, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Then Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and he will go out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal, kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Thanks be to God. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you And I will trust in you For your endless mercy follows me Your goodness will my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his pure I will trust in Jesus, and I will trust in Jesus, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will What is the primary purpose for Christ coming into the world? 
We as Christians would immediately answer that question by saying, oh, he, came, he came to die for our sin. He came to take our place. He came to, to take our punishment to pay our ransom. And all of those are correct. But in, in John 10, we see the primary reason why Jesus came. He says it himself in his own words. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. What the Lord Jesus Christ offers us, friends, is more than we could ever ask or think. He offers us a life that is complete. A life that is filled with, with fellowship, with hope, with joy, with peace, with uh, assurance. A life that is not without hardships. A life that quite often, like everyone else, will suffer heartache and pain. But a life whereby he promises that he will never leave us. And he will never forsake us. A life where he promises to stand by us, to walk with us through whatever comes. This morning, as we continue our series on the new life, I want to look at the source of the new life, the Lord Jesus Christ. It is in him and in him alone that we can find and experience this abundant life. But before we look at the, this new life, it is important, it is vital that we are aware of the enemies of the new life. In our primary passage in John 10.10, 10, we see the thief does not come except to kill and to steal and to destroy. Jesus is referring to the thief in, in the first chapter of, the first verse of chapter 10. But we all know he's referring to the great adversary, the devil, Satan, call him what you will. In verse 1 we read, Most assuredly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs up by some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. The thief has only one intention when he, when he breaks into your home. He comes to steal your valuables. He comes to take what is precious to, to you and I. And that is the case in point here. The devil is out to steal our victory, to take away our hope, to deprive us of that abundant life, to deceive us about the reality of the new life. And in many cases, friends, he is succeeding. Notice in the passage before us, we see the thief or the devil seeking to enter the sheepfold by another way. Trying to get into the sheepfold without the shepherd's knowledge. Is that not a reality today, friends? Because those who oppose the the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, those who argue against salvation will say that indeed there are many other ways into, into the sheepfold of God's salvation. That there are many other ways into the kingdom. <clears throat> that is a lie. And it is a lie that is being believed today. It is a lie um, Put forth by the devil. Because we're told clearly in, in verse 9 of chapter 10. Jesus says I am the door. If anyone enters by me he will be saved. And will go out and, and in and find pasture. In John 14 6 Jesus makes it even clearer. He says I am the way, the truth and the life. No one 
comes to the Father except by me. There is only one way of salvation. There is only one source of this new life. And it is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll never forget the, the, the listening to a former Archbishop of Canterbury saying on television in an interview that, he, that Christianity, that Jesus is one of many ways that we can come to God. Friends, he needs to go and read his Bible. Because that's not what the Bible teaches. Many others will say that obedience to a particular church will bring salvation. That obedience and, and, and to following rules and regulations and stipulations will bring salvation. All of these avenues uh, to the new life are false. And they will do nothing for our eternal soul. That is why we need to study the word of God. That is why we, we need to see what the word is saying. Last week, as we said, the word was the seed of the new life. It is the word of God that, put, that leads us to Christ. It is the word of God that teaches us the way of Christ. And Christ is the only source of the new life. In the illustration in John chapter 10, Jesus refers to us as sheep and Jesus as a shepherd. Now, I'm no farmer, but I am told that the sheep will willingly come to the shepherd when he calls. They will come running to the shepherd because they know his voice. And quite often, Quite often they're aware that the shepherd is there with a meal in, his, in the bucket for, for their provision. He's there to help them. He's there to provide for them. That's why, friends, it is important that we know the Savior's voice. Because there are many other voices out there. Many other voices out there that are trying to get our attention voices that will try to advise us of a better way a more convenient way a simpler way every single one which will lead to the devil's conclusion to kill to steal and to destroy and the question we have to ask ourselves this morning is which voice are we listening to? Are we listening to the voice of, of compromise? The voice that is enticing? The voice that is leading us to some easier way? Uh, some other way? Because that's the voice of the thief. The thief wants to steal what is precious. He wants to steal the victory. He wants to steal the hope. He wants to steal the joy. We need to listen to the voice of the good shepherd. The Lord Jesus Christ who seeks to lead us into a place of peace. Who seeks to shield us from danger. To protect us from the wiles of the devil. I pray that we know the words in John 10, 4 and 5. Jesus says, and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep will follow for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger. But will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. Those verses tell us that the good shepherd is going before us. We are following him. We are listening to his voice. 
that we don't listen to the voice of the stranger. We don't listen to the voice of the evil one because we know that in the good shepherd, we have all we need. Friends, the devil is out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is the enemy of the new life. Look at the certainties of the new life. Jesus says those words, those great words, I have come that they may have life and that they may have them more abundantly. I honestly believe some people fail to grasp what this new life in Christ is all about. Many people view this as some sort of philosophy, some sort of individual desire to be a better person, a life whereby we decide that we somehow want to follow a, a more moral code. Friends, take it from me. There is nothing about the new life in Christ that is a philosophy. It's not even a theology. New life in Christ is about a relationship. It is about being born again. It is about becoming a new creation. It is about abiding in Christ. The certainty of the new life, it's about God reaching down to us through Christ and the cross and drawing us to himself through Christ. That is why John writes, we love him because he first loved us. That, friends, isn't some moral decision. That, friends, isn't some decision that we make to somehow change. That is us coming from death to life. That is us becoming that new creation. That is us experiencing a spiritual awakening. It is the certainty of the new life in Christ. John in his first epistle in John, uh, 1 John 5, 11 and 12 writes these words. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. He who does, he who has the son has life and he who does not have the son does not have life. That can't be any clearer. It's one or the other. If we have Jesus, then we have life. If we don't have Jesus, we don't have life. This morning, I want us to really focus on the Good Shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to focus on what he means in his words, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd and the shepherd, the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. I want us this morning to picture, to picture the Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd sitting at the gate to the sheep protecting the sheep from the enemy, protecting the sheep from the ravenous wolves who are coming to scatter the sheep and to kill. I want us to picture the good shepherd as detailed in Psalm 23, the shepherd who provides for us, the shepherd who nourishes us, the shepherd who leads us into pastures, the shepherd who gives us rest, the shepherd who is walking with us through the valley of the shadow of death, 
The shepherd whose very presence casts away all fear. I want us to picture Jesus as the shepherd who is filling our cup to overflowing. The shepherd who allows us to feast in the very presence of our enemies. The shepherd who has promised us goodness and mercy all or all the days of our life and that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is his promise, friends. That is the promise that the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, gives us this morning. Is that not appealing? Is the love that Jesus offers you and I this morning, is it not abounding in grace and mercy? And what's even more, he wants us to abide in him. Think of it, friends. Think of what it means to abide in Christ. To be in him and he in us. That is an amazing thought. The new life in Christ is eternal. You know, friends, if we are fortunate, we may live into our 90s. Maybe even some of us may manage to make the 100. But one thing is certain. Someday we are going to die. Someday, whenever it comes, we are going to leave this scene of time. But the new life that Christ offers us doesn't end when we die physically. The new life that we have in Christ continues onward. Death for us is nothing more than a doorway. The doorway into a fuller life. A life that begins on earth. But continues very much into eternity. What a glorious gift. For all those who are willing to receive it. Where are we standing this morning? Do we know Christ? Are we listening to his voice? Are we following him? It is his desire to give us that abundant life. That life in all its fullness. Or are we listening to the many voices in the world. Voices that are leading us away from Christ. Voices that are telling us to follow our own way. Remember, those voices are from the evil one whose intention is to kill, to steal and to destroy. It's one or the other. My prayer this morning, friends, is that we will open our hearts. That we will open our minds to the voice of the Good Shepherd. That we will follow him. We will hear his voice. And we will know the Lord Jesus Christ, the source of the new life. And in him... We will know peace and joy today and hope for the future. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that you are the good shepherd, the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. We thank you for the, the peace and the comfort that we have in knowing that indeed you desire to go before us. That you are the one who is standing between us and those who would seek to scatter. You're standing with us against the evil one who seeks to kill, to steal and to destroy. May we learn this morning, Lord, to listen to your voice to incline our ears and our hearts and our minds to what you have to say. And may we seek, Lord, to follow you. Father, this morning, we come and we pray for your guidance. We pray, Lord, that as we make the, these plans to open, reopen our church in the coming weeks. We pray that you would give us wisdom as we seek to carry out the requirements that we seek to put in place a church whereby people can come safely and can worship once again in fellowship. Father, we pray that indeed there are many obstacles set in our paths, but we can remove each obstacle as we step forward in faith. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. We think of the the members of our own congregation who are in hospital, those who are in nursing homes, those who are continually shielding, those who are fearful of this pandemic. Lord, there are great needs. And Father, as we endeavour to meet each of those needs and as we pray for those we love Father we bring them to you because you are the source of all comfort you are the source of all healing so Father this morning as we depart from this time together we pray that we will go and we will seek to honour you not only in our words, Lord, but that we seek to honour you in our actions. That we live a life as Christ would want us to live. That we love as Christ would want us to love. That we would have compassion as Christ would want us to have compassion. Father God, this morning, May our joy and our hope and our peace be in Christ. And may he walk with us each and every day. Amen.